And for those of us who were with us during the time of our annual retreats, we said that the Lord God, I believe that the Lord Almighty wants to lead us to a higher ground, want to place our feet on a higher level. And we are convinced that God wants to take us as individuals, as a family and as a church to the next level. And in order to do so, there are certain keys that we must understand, certain principles that we must understand if we are going to be able to see the promises of God fulfilled in our lives. If we are going to see God move on our behalf. And that's why this evening I want to briefly share with you some of the keys that I believe will be able to position us to be able to move from where we are right now to where we need to be. And the first key that I want to share with us, if you look at the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 43, Isaiah 43. The Bible tells us from verse number 18 there. It said, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, and now it shall spring forth. Shall ye, ye shall, shall ye not know it? I even will, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. In other words, the Lord is saying that for us to be able to go to the next level where he wants to take us, we need to be able to settle some issues in the past. Some of the things that have occurred in our lives in the past, some of the things that have been holding our future hostage, some of the things that have not been allowing us to be able to step into the promises of the Almighty God, we need to be able to settle those things. He said, remember ye not, remember not the former things, because those things have already happened. Those things have already taken place. Whether we like it or not, there's really nothing you can do about them. Right. They, you know, the experiences have been, you, you have experienced those failures, you've experienced those disappointments. You've seen those things happen. In other words, don't let the pain of the past, the disappointment of the past, the failures of the past, those things that have happened in the past, do not let them stand in the way of your progress into the future. The Lord is trying to let us to understand that if we are going to step into the next level, we must be able to resolve those issues. We must resolve them physically. You must resolve them emotionally. You must resolve them spiritually. You must be able to take those things that belong into the past and keep them in the past. And the same thing he told Joshua. When Joshua was good, I was about to lead the children of Israel to the promised land. He said, at this point in time, I want you to say, Moses, my servant is dead. Joshua chapter 1. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. He said, now begin to move forward. Cross over this particular Jordan. In other words, unless you leave the past where it belongs, mm. you may not be able to move to the future that the Lord is promising you. The second thing that I want you to understand that the Lord is putting on our hearts so that we can be able to step, move into the next level is for us to get a vision of a possible future. It's not just living the past, but you need to be able to get an idea of what tomorrow looks like. What is the Almighty God putting in front of us? What is the Lord God Almighty trying to make us to understand? Where is the Lord taking us? What are the things that is making us to understand that this is where I am taking you? You need to be able to seek the clear vision. You need to be able to lay hold of a clear vision. You need to be able to clarify the vision of the possible future that God is trying to make available for you. Seek a clear vision. Amen. The Bible tells in the book of Proverbs chapter 28 and 29. In Proverbs 29 verse 18, the Bible says where there is no vision. The people will perish. In other words, when you have no understanding of what tomorrow holds, when you have no idea of what tomorrow will bring, you will begin to live carelessly. You will begin to waste resources. You will begin to cut off good relationships. You will begin to burn bridges. You will begin to do the things that are detrimental to your own future. And that is why he's saying, apart from you forgetting what has happened in the past, the disappointment of the past, he said, get a vision of what tomorrow holds. And the Lord God Almighty was given the same was giving the same advice to Abraham. The Bible says in Abraham in Genesis chapter 17, reading from verse number one, it says, When Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be ye perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell to his face, and God talked with him, saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. 
Neither shall thy name be, be any more called Abraham, but thy, but thy name shall be called Abraham, for, for a father of many nations I have made thee. And I will make thee an exceedingly, fru exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generation, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God. In other words, the Lord God Almighty was clarifying the review, clarifying the vision of this man called Abraham. The Lord is saying that, yes, I called you out of your father's house, but I have a bigger plans for you. I want you to have an idea of what I where, where I am taking you. I want you to get a clear picture of what I have in store for you. So it's not a, you need to forget about what the disappointment that you've had in your life, all the challenges that you had in your father's house. This is what tomorrow holds for you. And if you and I as an individual are going to move to the next level that God wants for us, if we are going to occupy that particular place that God has set for us in the future, you need to be able to catch a vision of what God has in store for you. The Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Now that has it entered to the heart of man, the things that God has purposed and planned for his own people. Amen. But you will need to see it. What you are not able to see, you are not able to pursue. What you cannot pursue, you cannot possess. Right. You need to be able to see it. You need to be able to see yourself occupying that particular job. You need to be able to see yourself in that particular home. You need to be able to see yourself growing into that particular place where you need to grow. You need to be able to see yourself being the person that you want, that God has said you want you to be. If you cannot see it, you cannot pursue it. If you cannot pursue it, you will not be able to possess it. In other words, you cannot make much progress as you step into the new year if you don't know where you're going. If you have no idea what God has in store for you. Key number three that the Lord Almighty is trying to bring to our attention is the key that you need to equip yourself to take advantage of opportunities. Equip yourself to take advantage of opportunity. In other words, only those who are equipped and well positioned to take advantage of opportunities will be able to take advantage of those opportunities when they present themselves. If you are not well equipped, if you are not well positioned, opportunities will present themselves, but you will find out that you are not in a position to take advantage of it. Mm. There was a time when the economy was in the door, was, was, in, was, was in shambles, and people were able to multiply their wealth. Those who were ready were able to multiply their wealth. They were able to buy properties. They were able to multiply their, you know, their investment. When that particular economy was bad, in that same economy, there were people who could not even feed themselves. So the people who were ready were willing to take advantage. The Bible tells us in the book of Exodus that there was a seven years of farming and seven years of lean of, of, of harvest. In the seven years of harvest, the Bible makes us to understand that there was a wise man who knew how to equip himself to take advantage of opportunity. And the Bible says that Joseph prepared the nation of Israel, the nation of Egypt, to be able to take that advantage. And when these lean years were coming, a lot of people who were not fully prepared, the Bible says that they started selling their land, selling their property in order for people to get food. And Joseph was able to acquire all those land. Why? Because he was ready, he was he had equipped himself. To take advantage of opportunities. In Proverbs 22, reading from verse number 29. Proverbs 22, reading from verse number 29. The Bible says, Seest thou a, a man diligent in his business? He shall not stand before, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mere man. In other words, he will take advantage of opportunity to stand in the place of prominence. The new year is going to present its own set of challenges. The new year will present its own sets of opportunities. Only those who are able to position themselves, only those who are able to equip themselves, who have equipped themselves mentally, equipped themselves financially, equipped themselves emotionally, those who have equipped themselves spiritually, those are the only people who will be able to take advantage of the opportunities that the new year will present itself. In other words, if you don't take time to equip yourself, if you don't take time to build up your own capacity, either spiritually, mentally, physically, whatever, if you don't take time to build up yourself, opportunities will present themselves in the new year and you might not be in a position to take advantage of it. So sometimes it's not the devil. Sometimes it's the carelessness of the individual not doing what they are supposed to do. Number four, 
For us to be able to move to the next level that God Almighty is preparing, preparing for us, we need to be able to discipline ourselves to obtain our desired prize. What is your goal for the new year? What do you hope to achieve? Where do you have to hope to get to? The vision that God has given unto you, how do you hope to get there? What, do you, what is God leading you to do? Where is it taking us? If you already have those things, for you to be able to possess the things that God has promised to give unto you, you need discipline. And only those who discipline themselves are, able, are going to be able to get the promise. The Bible tells in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul the Apostle is talking about himself. He's talking about himself. In verse number 24, Paul said, Know ye not that day, that day, which run in a race, run all, but one receives the price. In other words, there is opportunity. We are all going for a goal. We are all running towards a particular mark. We are all trying to achieve something in our life. And the new year gives us an opportunity to be able to run towards those things that we are pursuing. It's saying that, don't you know that they would run in a race? All of them will run, but only one received the prize. It says, so therefore, when you are running, when you are pursuing, when you are living your life, when you are doing whatever you are doing, it says, run that you may obtain. Because it is possible for you to run and not obtain. It is possible for you to live a life and not get the desired result. It is possible for you to be able to walk through the new year and allow the year to fizzle away without having anything to account for it. He says, so therefore, when you are running, when you are living, when you are studying, when you are walking, in everything that you do, he says, so run that you may obtain. In verse number 25, he now says, and every man that strives for the mastery is temperate. In other words, is disciplined in all things. He said, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. In verse number 26, he says, I therefore run. Not as uncertain, I fight. Not as one that beat the air, but I keep my body under. In other words, I discipline my body and bring it unto, into subjection. Lest by any means, when I have preached to order, I myself become a castaway. In other words, I make sure I discipline myself. So that the goal for which I am preaching is to be able to share eternity with God. I don't want to be able to lead others in and then become a castaway. In other words, I don't want to tell people that they should move on to the next level in the new year. And then I find myself not moving into that next level. I don't want to tell other people that they can make money. And then I find myself not making the money. I don't want to tell other people that yes, they can have good health. They can have good marriages or have good job or have good career. And then I find myself not receiving those same promises. In other words, I discipline myself to make sure I get the reward. If we are going to move to the next level, we must remember, number one, the things of the past are gone. There is nothing you can do about it. It is gone. The only thing you can do about the past is to learn from it and make sure you do not repeat the mistakes of the past. But apart from that, after... After you've done that, you need to get a clear vision of where God is taking you. Then you need to be able to equip yourself to take advantage and then discipline yourself to make sure you are focused so that you are not running in different directions at the same time. You are not trying to chase so many things at the same time. You are not so diverted or you are not so distracted that you are not focused in your, you are not able to apply yourself to a particular, you know, to a particular discipline. In other words, if you more, if you discipline yourself, that is when you will get the results. If you focus your attention, you do not allow yourself to be distracted. You do not allow your body, you do not allow your energy to be dissipated in different directions. He said, that is the way you can get the result. You cannot live carelessly and expect to see the results. It's not going to happen. You cannot live carelessly and expect the results to happen. Number four or number five. The next thing the Lord is telling us is that if you are going to be able to move to the next level, there needs to be a measure of diligence in your life. The diligence means that you are able to apply yourself. You are able to work it out. There's a difference between discipline and diligence. When you discipline yourself, you are trying to make yourself to do the things that your body will not ordinarily do. But when you say deliverance, you are sticking with it. When it is okay, you are doing it. When it is not okay, you are doing it. When it is fun, you are doing it. When it is not fun, you are doing it. You begin to continue to walk the job or walk the study or walk what you need to walk up, you know, and apply yourself so that you can get the desired result. The Bible tells us in that same again, Proverbs 22 verse 29, he says, see as a man that diligent, that who is diligent in his business, who continues to do his business, who is up and doing in his own business. He said, this man will not stand before ordinary men. He will stand before kings. 
And the same book of Proverbs chapter 12 tells us, the hand of the diligent bears rule, but the slothful shall be under tributes. In other words, you will, the man who refused to be diligent in his work will always be the person who is under subjection. He will always be the one begging. He will always be the one who has lack, who is wanting, who has insufficiency. But the man who is diligent, the Bible said that person will always be on top. He will always be the ruler. If you look at that same book of Joy, Proverbs chapter 13, if you read from verse number 4, the Bible says, The soul of the sluggard desired and has nothing. When you keep desiring, but you are not willing to apply yourself, you are not willing to do the work, you are not willing to be, to, to discipline yourself, to do what it takes to get the result. He said, the soul of the sluggard desired more, but the soul of the diligent man it shall be made fat. In other words, you will see the result when you walk. Walk does not kill. For some reason, the church will have believed that walk is a result of a curse. That curse is a walk. But one of the things they forget to understand is that even before Adam fell, the Lord already gave him a walk. That was when he started naming the animals. Right? right. That was when he was doing He was already walking before the curse. So a walk is not curse. But that was we must understand. If we are going to make progress, diligence, we are going to move to the next level. Diligence must be part of our life. In other words, if you are not diligent in your work, we will find out that the blessings of the new year, the blessings that God has promised, may be elusive in our lives. And the Lord will not allow that to be our portion in Jesus' name. Number six, the Lord is saying for us to move to the next level. We must sow in expectation of a harvest. You must sow in expectation of a harvest. Bible tells us in the book of Luke chapter 6, Reading from verse number 38, Luke 6, 38. The Bible says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you made without, it shall be measured to you again. If you expect to reap, you have to sow. There is no way you can get something for nothing. Either you sow a seed, you sow the seed of time, you sow the seed of love, you sow the seed of attention. You have to sow the seed for you to be able to reap a harvest. Second Corinthians chapter 9, the Bible said, Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply the seed sown, and increase the fruit of your righteousness, being enriched in everything, in all bountifulness, which cause it true, which cause it true, us, uh, 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 through us, thanksgiving to God. And if you go to Psalm 62, verse 5, you say, My soul, wait upon the Lord. Wait, my soul, wait up only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. In other words, when I sow, I expect to receive. You don't just throw your seeds away and just walk away as if nothing is happening. The Lord is saying that if you are going to move to the next level, you don't just sow indiscriminately. You don't just sow without any, without any thoughts. You don't just sow, uh, you know, without uh, unintelligently. You sow with intelligence. You sow with the expectation of receiving. And because you do that, you'll find out that the Lord will lift you and place you on a higher level. In other words, to reap a harvest, you must be willing to give up something. To reap a harvest in your life, in your family, in the life of your children, in the life of your, your in the life of your, the people that are around you, you need to be able to sow. And the Bible makes us to understand that only those who sow have the expectation of reaping. And if you are going to move to the next level in this new in this new year that we're about to enter, you must be willing to give up something. You must be willing to release something. You must be willing to be able to put something in the ground, sow a seed that will begin to yield a desired harvest. And then finally. Finally, for us to be able to move to the level where the Lord God Almighty expects us to be, we must be able to cultivate His presence. We must be willing to cultivate His presence. In the book of Exodus chapter 33, the Bible tells us that when the children of Israel were moving into the promised land, Moses got to a particular point and, tell, and told the Lord in verse number 15, He said unto him, If thy presence go not with us, do not carry us from here. In other words, if you are not willing to go with me on this journey, if you are not willing to enter into the new year with me, there is no essence taking me into the new year. If you are not willing to travel this journey with me, there's no point traveling this journey. And that is what Ezekiel was saying when he said that the, except the Lord builds the house, those who are building are laboring in, for, in vain. He said, said the Lord watches over the city. Those who stay awake at night are simply wasting their time. Except the Lord walks this walk with you. 
the journey becomes treacherous. It becomes very difficult. And we're saying that if we are going to move to the next level, you need to cultivate the presence of the Almighty God. You need to be able to walk with Him. Because the presence of the Almighty God will give you instruction. The presence of the Almighty God will give you guidance. The presence of the Almighty God will give you protection. The presence of the Almighty God will multiply your effectiveness. It will take your feet. It will enlarge your spirit and give you divine acceleration. The presence of the Almighty God will give you a divine provision that you will begin to see things that you never saw be seen before. It will begin to give you divine illumination, divine insight into things that you're supposed to be doing. This is what the presence of the Almighty God does. It makes you better than what you already are. It makes you to begin to function at a level that is beyond your own learning. It makes you to be able to do things that others will begin to look and wonder. But only when you cultivate the presence of the Almighty God. And how do you cultivate the presence of the Almighty God? If you look at the book of James, it said, draw near unto me and I will draw near unto you. In other words, the more you move closer to the Almighty God, the more he moves closer to you. And as you move closer to him, he begins to reveal things to you. He begins to show you greater things. And you draw near unto him with clean hands. You draw near unto him with a perfect heart. You draw near unto him with obedience. You draw near to the Almighty God in humility. You draw near unto him in repentance. You take away the things that make the Almighty God not happy with you. And as you do that, the Lord begins to open your eyes to see great things. That's why he said, call upon me and I will show you and I will hear and I will answer. And I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Only those who draw near unto him and cultivate his presence are able to enjoy that kind of a fellowship. And as we move into a new year, the Lord is saying that I have great things that I want to position my people for. Say the eyes of the Almighty God is moving to and fro, looking for who he's going to deposit his spirit upon. But unfortunately, there are very few people who are ready to take that thing. The new step is open. There are opportunities out there. There are positions that are open in the heavenly places. The only thing is that many of us are not ready to sit in there. And today, the Lord is saying, if you will forget the past, if you will seek the vision to see what I have in store for you, and I will open your eyes to see what I have in store for you, if you will just... Equip yourself, discipline yourself, be diligent in what you're doing, sow in the right soil and maintain my presence. Then I can take you from where you are to where you need to be. And as we do that this very evening, the Lord will position us to be able to move in that direction. Let's bow our heads as we talk to the Almighty God.